So this is going to be 6.5, part 2. Um, I'm on page 25 of your fill-in-the-blank notes, and we're going to be going, doing example number 4. So example 4 states, an overhead garage door has two springs. A force of 150 pounds is needed to stretch a single spring one foot past its natural length. So part A says, find the work done in opening the door when both springs stretch four feet. Okay, um, so to do this one, the first thing I have to do is I know that force equals the spring top, uh, constant times x. So i got to find this constant first. And to do that, I just plug and chug. So it says a force of 150 pounds equals k times x. x is going to be... Um, how far it went, which was one foot past its natural length. So therefore, K equals 150 pounds per foot. Okay, now um, I got my force formula, which is 150 times X. And now we need to work with this four feet. So I'm going to do one spring at a time. So in order to do one spring at a time, I'm going to use a formula integration from lower to upper limit and then we're going to put in the function which is 150 x dx okay uh so the lower limit if, if it's starting at a starting place is going to be zero if we want to move it four feet we're going to go to four and this is going to be your integration of 150 x dx okay so it's time to integrate Okay, so I'm going to integrate 150x. So when I do that, I get 150 divided by 2x squared. Okay, um, so if I simplify this down, it's going to be 75x squared, and then I'm going to integrate from 0 to 4. Okay, so it's time to take f at b minus f at a. f at b is 75 times 4 squared minus f at a is 75 times 0 squared. Okay, so if I take 4 squared, I get 16, and I get 75 times 16 minus 0. Uh, 75 times 16 is going to give me 1,200, and then minus 0 is just 1,200. So this is just the force acting on one spring. So that's the amount of work I shouldn't say force, the amount of work done by one spring, okay? The question asks us for part A, it says, hey, find the work done in opening the door when both springs are stretched. So what I'm going to take is I'm going to take that value of 1,200 and I'm going to multiply it by 2. And when I do that, I get... 2,400, and remember, uh, we're in foot-pounds, okay? So that's part A, and now part B says the garage door has a one-half horsepower motor. A one-half horsepower motor will do 275 feet per pounds of work. I shouldn't, oh, shoot, I shouldn't say per. So let me do that again. 275 foot-pounds of work per second. How long will it take to open the door? Okay, so to do part B, I'm going to set this up. I know that we have um, 2,400 foot-pounds of work done. And then I'm going to multiply that by uh, the one-half horsepower motor. So I'm going to uh, do one second equals 275 feet per pound. So let me read to you what my equation is. 2,400 foot-pounds over 1 times 1 second over 275 foot-pounds. And the foot-pounds cancel each other out. Um, so what I'm going to get is 2,400. And I'm going to divide that by 275. And when I do that, I get 8.7 seconds. So it's going to take 8.7 seconds uh, for that garage door to open. Okay, so let's do this last page, last page of the semester. Woo, woo. Uh, this says constant and variable force. So sometimes when you're lifting an object, 
you're going to have a combination of the two. And in this case, for example, five, we're going to see that uh, come into play. So a common work problem arises when vertical, with vertical motion. When the force is a gravitational force needed to overcome gravity, since weight already takes gravitational force into account, typically the force in these problems is the weight of the object. Okay, so once again, the force of these problems due to gravitational force is however much the object weighs. So let's look at example number five. A 100-foot chain, which weighs 15 pounds per foot, hangs vertically over the top of a building. A 500-pound beam is attached to the chain. Okay. So part, for part A, it says how much work is done lifting the beam to the top of the building, and we're ignoring the chain weight. So, so for part A, this is an example of a constant force problem. Okay, so the beam is going to be constant force. Okay, um, so the work for the beam is going to equal uh, force times the distance. Okay, so work for the beam is equal to 500 pounds. That's going to be the force, because remember it says the weight of it, times 100 feet. That's how far we're pulling it up over the building. Um, so the work for the beam is equivalent to 50,000 foot-pounds. Okay, so that's part A. Part B says how much work is done lifting just the chain to the top of the building. So when you pull a chain, what, what happens is it doesn't go at a constant rate. Usually you have to tug on it. So at first, you know, it goes slower and then it gets easier as it goes. So this is going to be an example of variable force. Okay, so the chain is variable force. Um, so if we want to find the force of the chain, Um, we got to figure out what is going on here, okay? Uh, so first of all, you know, if I have a chain hanging all over the, the building there, and remember it has a beam on the end, but we're ignoring the beam just for now. This chain, to pull it up over the building, it has to go 100 feet. So if I move it, let's say, this much, let's call this Y, okay? Um, so what does this become? This chain... To pull it up even a little bit, we can use the equation 100 minus y feet, okay? Now, the reason why I used y, remember, this is a, a vertical force. So, remember, I told you vertical force, you're going to be integrating in terms of y. So, the formula for the chain, the force of the chain is going to be 15 pounds, because remember, that's how much um, uh, the chain weighs. And then we're going to multiply that by 100 minus y. That's the distance the chain has to go. Okay? So I'm going to use a formula. Work, and remember, this is um, the work done for the chain. So let me put a little note here. It's going to be the integration from the lower limit to the upper limit. And it's going to be this equation 15 times 100 minus y dy. Okay, so all we have to do is figure out what the upper and lower limits are. So if the chain doesn't move at all, the lower limit's going to be zero. And if the chain moves all the way up to the top, it's going to be 100 for the upper limit. Okay, so let's make this look a little bit better. So we're going zero to 100. Uh, 15 times 100 is 1500. And then minus 15y dy. Okay. My next step is to integrate this, and then after I'm done integrating it, we'll do f at b minus f at a. Okay, so we'll pick up here. Uh, so once again, I'm integrating from 0 to 100, and we did uh, 1,500 minus 15y, and this was dy. So if I integrate that, I'm going to get uh, 1,500y minus 15 halves y squared. And remember, I'm integrating that from 0 to 
100. So I'm doing F at B minus F at A. So F at B is going to be 1,500 times 100 for Y minus 15 halves times 100 squared. Okay, minus F at A, we look out there because what's going to happen is I'm multiplying everything, you know, by zero. So this is going to zero out. This F at A is going to zero out. Okay, uh, so when I do this, I'm going to get uh, 15 with four zeros. So basically 150,000. And then um, I multiply 100 and I square that. So 100 times 100 is going to give me uh, 15 halves times 10,000, okay? So when you do the math here, your, your value is going to end up being 75,000 feet pounds, okay? So that's the amount of work that the chain is doing. So if you want to find the total amount of work, I know it didn't ask you to do that, um, but if you want to find the total amount of work, so this is a little bonus here, you're going to take the work of the beam and you're going to add on the work of the chain, okay? So the work of the beam, remember, uh, from part A was 50,000. plus the work that the chain did was 75,000. Uh, so if you add those together, you get 125,000 feet pounds. Okay, so that's that, once again, the total amount of work was um, a bonus, okay? All right, let's do part C. How much total work is done by lifting both the beam and the chain a quarter way up the building? Okay, so for the beam, remember we did the, the weight of the beam, which is 500 pounds, and then we're going to multiply that instead of by 100, we're going to multiply it by that by 25 feet, because a quarter way up the building is going to be 25 feet, and I got that by taking 100 divided by 4. Okay, so if I multiply those together, I'm going to get uh, 12,500 foot pounds, okay? So that's the work of the beam. And then the work of the chain, uh, I already figured out what the formula is, and I know the chain is variable force. So I'm going uh, from a lower limit of zero up to 25, because once again, we're going a quarter ways up. And remember, my formula was 15 times 100 minus y dy, okay? So we're gonna integrate that. And remember, this is the same one as before. Um, so we integrate this, we get 1,500y minus 15 halves y squared. And I'm integrating this from 0 to 25. Okay. All right, so I need to do this on the next page. Okay, so we're going to do f at b minus f at a. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 25 for the first one. Whoops. Um, so if I plug in 25, I get uh, 1,500 times 25 minus 15 halves times um, 25 squared. Okay, minus F at A, remember... All of this is going to zero out. Why? Because, um, you know, anything times zero, zero. So basically, we just have to worry about this first half. So if you plug this stuff into your calculator, uh, 1,500 times 25, and then subtract 15 halves times uh, 25 squared, I'm going to end up with 32,812.5 feet pounds. Okay, so remember this is the work of the chain. Okay, so if I want total work, 
I got to add the work of the beam, which was a constant force, plus the work of the chain, which was a variable force. And if I add those together, I get uh, 1,200, 500, or 12,500 plus 32,812.5. So when I add those two together, the total work done is going to be 45,312.5 feet pounds. Okay, and that's it. Congratulations, you are done with all material for this class. Next step is to take the test and then the final exam. So almost done.